Recently, Chris Fitch and I looked at three different styles of chisel cases that we've built over the years. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through building our most recent style, which is this timbre door chisel case that Chris Fitch designed. This chisel case with the door closed keeps your chisels nice and protected, and it prevents them from rolling off the bench. By opening the door, you have easy access to all your chisels that are held in customized chisel holders. The construction process can be broken down into three parts. The first is gonna to be to build this outer case. After we have the case done, we'll go ahead and talk about the timbre door construction, and it's really not as hard as it seems. Finally, we'll wrap up the construction by building these customized chisel cradles that will fit to your set of chisels. Now, we've shown how to mill parts to size a lot, so I'm not gonna make you sit through that again, but take note of all the dimensions that are in the plans. Once you have everything cut, you'll be left with a pair of sides and a front and a back. Now we have a little work to do to these before we can actually get to any assembly. That's going to start by cutting a series of grooves on the inside of these parts. The first groove that we're going to cut is going to be a through groove along the bottom edge, and that's going to hold the back panel. Next, we're going to move a little higher and we're going to cut a stopped groove. That's going to be for a sub bottom that will actually hold the or hide the timbre door once it's fully opened. And lastly, we'll go ahead and cut this racetrack shaped groove. Now this is the groove that the timbre door is actually going to ride in. So this needs to be nice and smooth and fluid for that timbre door to work properly. And that's where I want to start is with this timbre door groove. So I'm going to go ahead and clear off this bench and I'm going to show you how to get that cut. Cutting the groove for the timbre door starts with this hardboard template. Now this is a pretty specific shape, but don't worry, we have a full size template in the plans. When you go to select your template material, make sure that you're using something that's thick enough because we're gonna use a guide bushing in our router. We don't want our guide bushing touching our workpiece. We just want it to follow the template. I've put a couple pieces of double-sided tape on the back and I'm gonna peel that off and position my template and stick it down nice and tight. Then using a quarter inch straight cut bit and a guide bushing, I'm gonna follow the outside edge of this template all the way around. Once I have the first workpiece cut, I can pull the template up, flip it over, and stick it down to the opposing side, and then make the same routing pass to cut that side. After that's all done, we'll go ahead and talk about cutting the grooves for the bottoms. So now that we have our timbre door groove cut, we can go ahead and address the straight grooves that are left for the inside of the case. I'm gonna start by cutting a through groove on each piece. That's gonna hold the bottom of the case. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this small Dremel router table that we built in a recent issue of Woodsmith Magazine. And I must say, I'm pretty excited to use it. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, and then we'll go ahead and talk about the stop groove for the sub bottom. To cut the grooves for the sub bottom, start by cutting a through groove in the front first. Then you can cut the stop grooves in the side. I'm using a piece of masking tape where I've made a couple marks. One of those is to stop the first side when I reach that mark. And the other mark is to route the other side. I start with the workpiece on that mark and lower it over the running bit and then route through the end. Here 
There are just a couple more things to finish up on the case before we can set it aside and go to the timbre door. The first of those is going to be to round over the corners of the sides. And that radius just follows that timbre groove that we cut on the inside of the sides. Then we have to cut rabbits in the ends of the front and back panel. Those will attach to the sides later. You can see how that groove holds the sub bottom and the bottom in place. So now that this is together, but not glued, we're going to set it off to the side and we'll start working on the tamper door. To build the tamper door, you really only need a couple things. First, you're going to need your tamper strips. These are cut from a hardwood blank that's been planed down to size. I then went over to the table saw and ripped them down to width. And because you're going to need a lot of these, I like to batch cut them as much as I can at the miter saw to a rough length. We'll trim them by length later. Then you're going to need a plywood sled. And that's what I have here. This is nothing more than a thin piece of scrap plywood with a fence attached to the back side. It's important, however, that the fence is attached square. That's because we're going to use this fence registered against the rip fence on the table saw to trim everything to final width once we get everything glued up. On top of the sled, I've put a pair of double-sided tape strips. Those are to hold down the strips for the timbre door while we're assembling everything and getting the cloth back or glued on. Simply line up the strips and push them down. Now you're not really looking to get these on there super tight but you want them to stay in place while the glue is drying and while we're applying the cloth. Once these are all applied and everything's nice and tight, we can go ahead and start applying glue. And when you're applying glue onto these, you don't want there to be enough glue that it's dripping down in between your strips, but you want enough that the cloth is gonna be saturated. It's kind of a fine line between enough and too much, but we'll take care of the too much in a little bit in case there is any. Let's get a little more glue. And even though these are to rough width, I'm gonna get glue as close as I can to the edge just to make sure we have good coverage. A foam brush is really nice to spread this glue out, but I'm using a plastic spreader and that works all right also. Okay, so once I have good coverage on here, we can go ahead and apply our cloth backer. I've cut this to size, but I've left it a little long. And that's because we're gonna add a timbre handle once we assemble the door into the case. So then you can just position the cloth over the strips and lay it down. Then you're gonna wanna rub it down and make sure you have good contact all the way across the cloth. This Canvas is just simply canvas that we picked up from our local fabric store. Just something that's a little heavy that will hold the glue. All right, now that all that cloth is stuck down, we're gonna let it tack up and then we'll head over to the table saw and trim this to final width. To trim the timbre door, set the fence and make a cut along one edge, removing a saw width worth of waste. Then flip the blank around, readjust the fence, and cut the entire sled to final width. Now that we have our door cut to width, we're going to want to pull it up off the backer sled to make sure there's no glue stuck between those slats. I'm going to start by taking off this tape that I used to hold the cloth down. Then, it's just a matter of prying it up off that sled. Let's get this tape off here. Then, what you're gonna wanna do is stand it up on edge and just give it a good roll. You can, you can, you'll be able to feel where the glue has maybe seeped down in between those slats and it's sticking together. But it's really important to do this 
while the glue is still tacky. Once that glue sets up, you're never gonna get these apart. So we wanna make sure that the glue's tacky enough that it stays on the backer, but it's soft enough that we can still roll it and separate all of these slats. And you might hear a little cracking while you're doing this. That's okay, it's just the glue releasing. So I'm gonna finish getting these all separated. Then I'm gonna go ahead and leave this door standing on the table saw and let the glue finish setting up. That way I can head over to the bench and we'll go ahead and start working on those chisel holders. The chisel cradles start off as a pair of hardwood blanks that are left slightly oversized. They're oversized for a few reasons. The first is it gives ample room to tape down a hardboard template that we're gonna to use to route our handle locations. Also, I've left a little extra on the end and that leaves me room to put a clamp on there so when I'm routing it doesn't move around and the clamp isn't in the way of the router base. The template is just simply a piece of hardboard and I've taken my handle from my chisel and rest it over the top and then traced out the outline of the handle. Then it's just a matter of using a coping saw and filing rasps to remove the waste so the handle fits in there nice and snug. I've also drawn a center line on here and a center line where each of my chisels are going to be located. That gives me an easy way to register both the template and the hardwood chisel cradle. Once I have those all laid out, I can get this taped down and start routing. Speaking of the router, we're going to use a small palm router. The small footprint makes it pretty easy to balance and easy to control. In addition, there's a half inch core box bit that has the bearing on the shank. And that bearing is going to ride around the inside of the hardboard template and cut our grooves for our chisel handles exactly the same shape as this template. We're going to make a couple passes getting deeper each time and that bearing is eventually going to leave the hardboard template and go down into the hardwood in the first cut we made. Then it's just a matter of nibbling away the waste till we're at our final depth. Creating the cradles for the blades is exactly the same process, but instead of using a coping saw and files to make the template, I'm just going to go ahead and use a dado blade and remove the waste that way. And then it's the same process using a, a dado clean out bit with a bearing on top. Once these are all routed out, we can go ahead and cut them to size and install them into the case. There's a little bit of work left to do to those chisel cradles, but we're at a point where we can get some assembly done. This starts by attaching the back to the sides with a rabbit and some glue. I went ahead and inserted both the bottom and the sub bottom, and then we can go ahead and feed the timbre door through that groove and up into the track. You're just gonna wanna make sure that the front edge is gonna be the edge that has the extra canvas on it. That canvas is gonna get a timbre door handle inserted into the groove and then glued to the canvas. Then you can trim any extra canvas off and allow it to dry. Then the only thing that's left to attach is the front panel and that simply slides into place on the front end. Then once the chisel cradles are done, those can be glued in. Now, of course, this all goes together a little bit better with some pre-finishing. Then you can get finished into those nooks and crannies. I'm gonna finish the timbre door separately from the case and I'm going to finish those chisel cradles separately. But once that finish is dried and everything is finally assembled, what you're left with is some nice, handsome storage that's going to keep your favorite hand tools not only protected, but close at hand. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it and want to see more from Woodsmith, be sure to subscribe and also click the bell so that you'll get notified every time we launch a new video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them below. 
we're going to answer every one that we can. Also, if you're looking for plans, supplies, and other information, you'll find the links for that in the description below as well. Again, thanks for watching.